So this is uh, the course of topology, okay? There will be two parts, as every year. So the first is uh, uh, general topology. Or set theoretic topology. And the second one is uh, a small part of algebraic topology. And this means, for us, fundamental group. And coverings. This is the main part, two thirds, and this is one third, something like this. The book is uh, Mancras. So this is topology. And this is the second edition. So there's also the first edition, but you should take the second edition. Because there are other exercises. This you will need copies, as every year, OK? And I'll tell you what you need. So these are uh, uh, general topologies. These are chapters two, three, and four. We will not do everything, but these are this is general topology. And then, this is too much, but you will need these, OK? And then, uh, also chapter 9. This is the second part, fundamental group and coverings, OK? That's chapter 9. Maybe a little bit also from later chapters, but that's not so clear, OK? These are the four main, cha main chapters, OK, from the book, from the second edition. Not the first. The first is a little bit different. And so you need copies of these chapters. You can also take chapter one. Chapter one is uh, set theory, general, which is useful, of course. Okay, So I recommend that you uh, uh, take copies of chapters one, two, three, four, and nine. Because there are many exercises. We will not write on the blackboard the exercises. And there are many examples, and so on. Okay. The book is in the library, OK? It's the beginning. The textbooks, no? You find it immediately, this book. Or you go to somebody from, from uh, last year, and he will have that, OK? So you can copy immediately. OK? So I will start with uh, general topology now. Uh, <coughs> however, I would also. So it will be English. I, I would like to know about the English also a little bit. So maybe we go, I go over the list. So from Egypt, you are familiar with English, right? Yeah, no. Sudan? Well, this is main language. English also. It's not so. Senegal is French more. Vietnam, well, <laughs> whatever. Pakistan, that's English also, right? Shouldn't be a problem. Iran, who's, yeah. Uzbekistan, Kenya. Sri Lanka, Bahamas. That's more Spanish, or what? The main, huh? English. So I suppose the language will be no problem, all right? Most of you are English, maybe French, but I don't know. So <laughs> you have to learn English, right? You have to write English. We will give home, written homeworks, OK? And you have to write. So not today, but maybe tomorrow. OK, I will give some. And then I will collect. OK. So anyway, let's start. So it starts 
I mean, topology is a generalization of analysis, real analysis, okay? There's to a lot of topology anyway, so it starts from this. The definition is quite abstract, so, of a topology. So X is always a set. X denotes a set. And a topology on X, I, I use, of course, the notion of the book, okay? I follow exactly the notion of the book, otherwise I will be confused. A topology on X is a collection of subsets, a collection T, and now this is a written T, okay? So there will be a difference between printed and written T. A collection T of subsets of X. And these are called open sets, OK? The open sets. Such that three conditions hold, such that. We have three conditions. So the first one is uh, that uh, the empty set, that's the empty set, right? The empty set and the whole uh, are in T. They are open, in other words, OK? In, e in every topology. Topology is a collection of subsets of this. Then we have uh, the second condition. So this is not very significant. The second condition is that, uh, so you're thinking of analysis, right? Open sets in R2, the topology of analysis. So what you have that uh, uh, arbitrary unions of open sets are open. Okay, so arbitrary unions. of open sets are open. Or more formally, if you have open sets U alpha in T, where alpha is from some index set, so index set it's not so clear, I or J. In the book, it's J. I very often is an interval, OK, used. So, but so this is an index set. Then the union is open. Union. So this is a union of all these. Alpha and J is in T. Okay? So this is formally, and this is in language, usual English. Okay? Arbitrary unions of open sets. Arbitrary unions means that uh, this is an arbitrary index set. It, finite, infinite, doesn't matter, okay? And then there's a third condition. And this says then that uh, finite intersections only, finite intersections of open sets only. Finite intersections of open sets are open. So now, more formally, this means if u1, un are in T, so they are open sets, then also the union, the intersection, find the intersection, u1 intersection, intersection un is in T. So these are the three conditions. The first one, empty set, the whole 
sets are open. Arbitrary unions of open sets are open. And finite, why finite intersection? Uh, well, to motivate that, uh, you all know real analysis, okay? The topology of the real line or of R2, okay? And uh, uh, so uh, let me give an example, informal example. I have to get used to this blackboard. That is very high. Oops. So, example. Uh, let's take uh, real intervals, okay? Real analysis. So let's take the interval from minus 1n to 1 over n. So this is a real interval. Okay? And takes intersection, n in n, natural number. What is the result? Zero. So real intervals, real, sorry, open intervals, okay? Real open intervals. This is open interval, okay? So they are open. But this is zero, okay? And this is not open in the standard topology of analysis, okay? Not open. So arbitrary intersections in R, and this means R is a standard topology, okay? The analysis topology, okay? So we will define this anyway, but uh, this is just standard topology. So that's why we better ask finite intersections. For the standard, uh, for uh, this standard topology of R, finite intersection is no problem, okay? And arbitrary units is no problem, okay? So, but this is a very abstract definition of topology, okay? Okay. This is the basic definitions of general topology. Well. So examples. So we will write x with a topology t. So this is a topological space, OK? A set with a topology. But very often, we will not write the t. There are many topologies, so examples on the same set. Let's discuss some easy but important examples. So on, on each uh, uh, set, so x is a set, always, OK? Capital X. So we can take, so X is a usual, as usual set. And we take T, uh, and this is the uh, indiscrete topology. Let's start E, I, I write I. So this, we need two. Open sets all, that's empty set and the whole space, okay? So we take the empty set and the whole space. So this is a topology. And if, if you have questions, you should ask. Also about English, I don't know. Uh, uh, if you don't understand some words, you have to interrupt and ask. You have to learn English, okay? There's no way. <laughs> so you have to learn English and mathematics, both, okay? So don't hesitate to, to ask, okay? Mathematics, but also if you don't understand some word. That's important, okay? To, to, because you have to write, you have to. So this is a topology, and this is an indiscrete topology. On X. On each set, we have the indiscrete topology, which is maybe not very interesting, but 
Then we have the opposite. What is this? This will be t uh, TD, the discrete topology. So we take everything. Yeah. So this is, uh, uh, you take all subsets of X, okay? All subsets of X. You just take everything. Then, of course, the conditions are valid, and this is a discrete topology. This is the indiscrete and the discrete. So this exists on each set. And then we can compare topologies. So it's a, we learn a language in some sense, OK? So we say that, uh, so we have uh, two topologies, let's say. Other examples. So let t and t prime be two topologies on X. And maybe we can compare, maybe we cannot compare. What means compare? So T is finer, yeah, coarser, finer, uh, finer, or strictly finer, is finer than T prime if, so that's a definition, finer than T prime if uh, T has more open sets. So this means T prime is contained in T, no? Yeah. If T prime is contained in T. And strictly, so this means subset may be equal, okay? Including equal. This is the standard, no? And, and strictly finer, strictly finer if T prime here. Now we have to write, we have to be different, right? So this is finer and strictly finer. And the opposite is uh, 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 coarser, OK? So this means uh, t, t is finer. T prime is coarser than T, OK? It's, uh, t prime is coarser. Than T. So finer, yeah, one second. Finer means larger. OK? Yes, what? <laughs> Finer means larger, OK? More open sets. Coarser means smaller, less open sets. No? Strange words. Finer, coarser, OK? Larger, smaller. That's coarser than T, or strictly coarser, of course, no? Strictly coarser. So these are it's just the vocabulary, some words. But it's clear uh, we will see examples. Not all topologies we can compare, OK, in general. Other example. <coughs> so this is the first example uh, uh, where we give a name uh, because in some sense, it's useful, and also for exercises, OK? You will see in exercises. We have some standard examples, OK? This is maybe one, not the most important, but one. This is a finite complement topology. The finite complement topology. So this uh, I will define the finite complement topology. <coughs> so X is a set, always okay. X is a usual set, and then we have, let's say F. That's okay. We have indiscrete, discrete, finite complement topology. Give some name T uh, T F. 
So all sets which have final complement, the name just already says what it should be. So these are all u in x, all subsets u of x, which have final complement, OK? So complement, I write x minus u. There are other versions, OK? x minus u. This is a complement. of x, of u in x. So I use this notation, x minus u, OK? Because sometimes you use some uh, uh, minus. Is finite. This is finite, except that in general it's not a topology, because uh, uh, we say that uh, the empty set should be open in any case, no? So the empty set, x minus empty set should be finite. It means x is finite, no? So that's not very interesting, finite sets. Well, it may be interesting, but uh, uh, we, so we better add something, uh, the empty set, OK? Because, so I have to add the empty set. If x is finite, no problem. If x is infinite, it's not a topology. I had to add this. It's, for the whole, it's no problem. Okay? If this is x and x minus x is empty. Okay? But I have to add the empty set. Then it's a topology. So tf is a topology. Let's see. Well, that's an exercise, easy exercise. Maybe useful because. Uh, uh, you use some law which, which uh, you find useful every now and the Morgan law, okay? So uh, the first is the empty set and x uh, are in tf now. By definition almost now, okay? By definition. And for x, it's trivial, okay? So this is okay. Then we have arbitrary unions. So you just arbitrary unions, finite intersections, arbitrary unions. Uh, so what do you have to prove? Uh, we take uh, uh, arbitrary many sets, so uh, u alpha, OK, open sets. What does it mean? So u alpha open. Open means now we have this topology, OK? We are working with this topology. There may be other topologies, but if you say open, then it's this topology we are working with. What does it mean? That means that x minus u alpha is finite. Almost, except this special case. Let's, let's first forget this special case. Also, u alpha is open. This means that x minus u alpha is finite, OK? Finite complement. But what we want to prove, by the way, we want to prove that the union is that the union is also open, no? So let's take the union. Union U alpha, alpha and J. We should prove that this is open. What means open? Find a complement, right? So x minus union u alpha. And now you have De Morgan. So this is known as De Morgan's law, one of two De Morgan. The other one we see for the intersection. So what is this? Intersections. Okay, that's a, the more. This is the first chapter of the book. Okay, set theory, the more law. Okay, that you should be able to prove. Okay, uh, in general, one proves with two in inclusions. Okay, take an element here and see it's here and the other direction, okay? I will not do this now. This is the first chapter of the book. You find 
all this stuff. But uh, what is this? These are finite. OK, all these are finite. So the intersection remains finite, of course. It's easy. So this, all this is finite. And this means that this is open. Alpha and J is open. Okay. Except that it's not completely true. Because we have, unfortunately, this special case, the empty set. All right. So we have to think a little bit uh, about this. So uh, we have to prove uh, that the union of open sets is open, OK? If one of these sets is the empty set, we can forget it. It doesn't matter, OK? The union uh, doesn't, the empty set doesn't contribute to the union. So to make this proof correct, because this is finite, it's not true, OK, in general. To make the proof correct, I uh, 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 have to add something just here. What do I add? We can, we can assume that u alpha is not empty, OK? Uh, uh, we can assume. We have to uh, add that. Otherwise, it's not true, all right? We can assume that u alpha not that. And then it's true, OK? But unfortunately, we have to add this. Otherwise, we write something which is not correct. Right. So we have to be careful. OK, so this is uh, uh, arbitrary unions. And the same for finite intersections. So this is the third point, finite intersections. Well, it's sufficient for two, but we can use n, OK? If we uh, uh, prove it for intersection of two, then we have it for three, four, five by induction. But it doesn't matter here. So let's take u1, un, open. So open means just to change in tf. That's the same as, oh, well, I, here I write open. That means in tf. Mm -hmm. Yes? What uh, De Morgan's law says? X minus a union. Alpha equal X intercept union U alpha and full complement. So did I write the wrong De Morgan's law? <laughs> Huh? Let, let me first uh, do this second the morning so. So this means that uh, 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 we have to consider now the intersection, right? The intersection of, uh, well, ui, i from 1 to n, right? And we have to prove that the complement is finite, except for this. So x minus the intersection. So we have the other De Morgan now, OK? And now we have the union. I from 1 to n. OK? If you don't believe this, we have to prove this, OK? <laughs> That's an exercise. Is this OK? So if this is OK, let's assume this is finite, finite complement. Then now a finite union of finite sets remains finite. Okay. Finite union of finite sets is finite. Finite union of finite sets. And this means that the intersection ui i from 1 to n 
is in TF is open, okay? Except it's if you write this, it's not completely true, okay? Because UI might be empty, okay? This is open, okay? Then this maybe is not final, but then you have X here, okay? And then we get by the union X, which is open also. So this is true, trivial in some sense, okay? So you un, uh, 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 so I have to add here something, okay, as before. So UI, we can assume that UI are not empty. Because if they are empty, then we have X here, and the union is X, and it's open in this case, okay? This is the main case here. The other case is trivial. So x minus intersection is the union of x minus sig. And now, where's the other bit more slow? Let's check if it's alpha and j. So this is Correct? Yes. That's important. This is okay? Yeah. So as I said, if you have to do an exercise to prove this, then you have these two, no? And here you have these two, no? This usual thing. You say, you take a point here, right? You take a point here. It means it's not here. Okay? It's not here in this union. Then it's not in U alpha for each alpha. So it's here. It's not in U alpha. So it is in X minus U alpha. So it's in each of these. So it's an intersection. That's the proof, right, of this inclusion. Maybe too fast, OK? But I don't want to write that now. Okay, this is a proof of this inclusion. You want me to write that? I don't know. I mean, there are two problems. It's not necessary. Uh, it's minus uh, union uh, here. U alpha. Yes. Is the uh, union alpha complement there? Uh, it's an uh, intersection of uh, U alpha complement there. So you just have another notion for this. You say, this is, you, you uh, write the uh, union, u alpha. Well, but it's a complement, right? x minus. I mean, it's the same. Sometimes somebody writes this complement. But I write this way. Anyway, I don't use this, OK? And the book doesn't use this. If you have the complement, it's x minus the set. That's a complement. I, I, it's better to stay to the book, okay, to the notion, okay? If it's clear what you mean, it's no problem, right? But it has to be clear. I mean, if you write this for complement, of course, I will understand, everybody will understand that you mean the complement. It's just a question of notation. The notation has to be clear and, and okay? I don't insist on, on uh, that it has, okay? But it's better to stay to the notation of the book. This is our basic text, OK? So what is the easier proof? Who, who, there's an easier proof? Which one? This is a complementary. What? This is a complementary. Well, it's, it's just, sorry, it's just a way to write, OK? Another way to write. The complement. This. But that's exactly the same. This is exactly the same as this. Yeah, but this is not a proof. If you have to prove, I mean, this and this is exactly the same in another notation, right? It's just another notation. And you say this is the Morgan's law, okay? 
So this is clear. It's the Morgan's law. But it's not the proof. If you want to prove it, you have to prove something, OK? You cannot. <laughs> if you say, I want to prove this, so I write this, OK? Then I say, that's the same, OK? That's exactly the same. It's not a proof. If you want to prove this, OK? And then I prefer this notation. Why? Because, but it's a matter of taste, OK? As I said, let me say it again. This inclusion here, OK? Take a point here. We have to prove it's also here. That's this inclusion. Take a point here. That means it is not here, because it's x minus, OK? If you take a point here, it's not here, OK? Because this has gone away. It's not, this is clear, for me, easier to, 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 to say, OK, than this one. No? So it's not here. What does it mean? x is not in the union. That means x is not in u alpha for each alpha, OK? So that means it's not here, so it's here in the complement of each u alpha. In each of these, so it's in the intersection, OK? So this is a proof of this, OK? And you see a certain advantage of this notation, maybe, OK? Because it's, well, but it's a matter of taste, OK? For me, this is clearer. This is shorter, maybe. But for the proof, this. And then you do the same in this direction, OK? The same kind of argument. And here you have also two things to prove, OK? Maybe you can do it in a single one, no? implies, implies, or you say if and only if, if and only if. But, and then, but that doesn't matter. OK. So this is a final complement topology, which we will see again. OK. What's this next example? We have another definition. So we will see this finite complement. Well, it's very intuitive what it is. Okay, finite complement topology. Okay, now we have another definition. Basis for a topology. So definition. And now we have a set again. We have no topology. I mean, in general, in many books, you start with topology, and then you have basis for a topology. OK? Here, he starts with basis, and then he defines a topology. So, so x is a set, not a topological space. You don't have any topology, OK? A basis for a topology on x. basis for a topology on x is a collection collect, collection b and this is again a written b now okay like t for topology is a collection b of subsets of x. By the way, what means collection? Collection? Huh? Like a group. No, let, let's forget group. Group is more complicated. Collection just means set, in some sense, OK? Collection, family. Yeah, group, not in the mathematical, not in the algebraic sense. Yeah, right, right. Then group. But group in the mathematics is, a group is something from algebra, no? So that's, uh, we don't want to use group anyway, because this is algebra. So collection is just a word, which means, we, we may say it's a set of subsets, OK? But that's not so nice, set of subsets for, for, for <laughs> so, family. Yeah, family would be OK. F collection, family, the most, or set. Well, there's a certain difference between collection, family, and set. 
because uh, uh, what may happen? The difference is the following. Collection B of subsets, OK? So we have maybe many subsets, but it may happen that all these subsets are the same, OK? So we have a collection of, of 20 subsets, but they are all equal, OK? So it's a collection. We have 20 subsets, OK? It happens that they are equal, OK? Or some of them are equal, no? A set of subsets, OK, uh, we have one, uh, each one one time only, no? So if they are all equal, then the set contains just one element. But the collection has 20, maybe, or maybe infinitely many, OK? So this is a diff difference. It's more a linguistic point of, OK, of family, collection, and set, OK? In a set, you write each element one time. In a collection, it may happen that uh, you write the same element many times, OK? Even infinitely many times. So this is, a, uh, 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 of course, we use the word collection or family. Family would be OK. And it's used also, no? But in the book, it's collection, so collection. Even set, but it's, this is better. Of subset of x such that. Two conditions hold. In the union, so for each x and x is in one of these, OK? Uh, uh, each, for each x and x, there is a b. In B. And now be careful. This is B in B, no? This is a collection of subsets. So this is one element. So this is a. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a written B, and this is a printed B, OK? So you have to don't mix up these two, OK? Then, so this is a difference, OK? This is a written B, and this is. Printed B, OK? Sometimes they look similar, and you don't look at what is written, what is the printed. But uh, we have to be careful with this, OK? There's B and B such that this is mean such that, no? Such that, such that X is in B. That means the union is of all, of all. So the, how, how do we write this? The union B, B and B. Okay. The union of all B, B in B, is X. But sometimes this may be written also in a different way. So the union B, I don't know what is better, B in B. Okay. So this and this means the same. Right? Not always. So that's the first condition, okay, which is not the interesting one. The interesting one is the second one. The second condition is the interesting condition, which says, yeah. So if you have two basis elements, B1 and B2, Let so given B one, B two in B, they call basis elements, okay, and X in the intersection B one, intersection B two. Then so uh, uh, I make a picture at the same time. Very. Stupid, simple picture, of course, but so we have B1 and B2, and we have a point is in the section X. By the way, this is that's another point we have to be careful now. X, the set X is capital X. An element in X is small X, okay? So we have 
uh, this is a small x, okay? So we have small x in capital X. So you have to write carefully, okay? Then there is, there exists a third one, P3 in B, such that X is in B3, and this is contained in the intersection, B1 intersection. B2. So here you have the third one, and this is B3. This is a picture. Sorry? B, B3. Yes. OK, that's a definition of a basis. No topology. To, for me. Of course, uh, uh, now you think of analysis. Uh, 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 so motivation for basis, if you uh, motivation. So we take R2, OK, the standard topology from analysis. So what, what do you think will be a basis for this topology? Yeah, open disk. Okay, take take uh, B. Yeah, that's a uh, open disk. Okay, and then we have this condition. No, if you have two open disks, that we will prove anyway. But we will uh, much later when we talk about the metric space. Okay, <coughs> so we take a point here, right, and then we found the third open disk which contains this point, even the center, OK, and which is contained in the intersection. No, this is a picture. So this is uh, this condition, OK? And now we have also, it's clear how to define the topology, OK? Because how to define the topology here? Well, you, you remember uh, the standard topology from analysis. Something is open. When is it open in analysis? Some set U is open. If given any point X in U, you find an open ball around X which is contained in U. So here you now have to find this. Okay? And this is the definition we take for the topology now. Okay? So this is uh, uh, just the motivation for this basis. And now we need the topology. Okay? So. Definition. The topology generated by the topology T generated. Definition of the topology T generated by the basis B. That's what we want to define now, OK? We have a set, we have a basis, and now we want the topology. So the definition is the following. So U is in, in this topology generated. So the topology generated by the basis. So U is open for this topology. If, and now we take what we said before, if for each, for every <coughs> x and x, x and u, there exists, there is uh, element b in b, which depends on x maybe, so I may add an index here, you know, b, x, and b such that x is in x 
Vx subset of that was exactly the point. And so uh, then we have to prove that this is a topology. So the topology so uh, 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 proof so claim the claim is that T is a topology. T is a topology. So we have, uh, again, our three conditions. So empty set. So where's the definition here, no? U is open if for each, for every x in U, empty set, it's automatic. There are no points, so no problem. That's trivial, OK? For every x in u, there's no x, so we don't have to verify anything. Empty set in u, and, and the whole. What is the whole? Uh, x in x, uh, sorry, x and t, in the s open, x is open. It's easier to say open, OK? Then this t is more technical. x is open, why? That's the first condition of the basis. By the first condition, of each x is in some, by the first condition. For, of a basis. That says that each x in x is in some basis element, b in b, OK? So this is. What is also very easy is, uh, so this is the main condition, right? So we should use that at a certain point. But uh, the second one is also almost trivial, OK? Uh, uh, what is this second one? Arbitrary unions, no? Open sets are open. So union U alpha, alpha and J. So let. So these are open. No, and now you see it's trivial. So we have to what we have to do is let X. This is our condition for every x in, okay? So let x be in this union. This means that, uh, well, sometimes uh, uh, at the blackboard it's convenient to use this. Or you write then, okay? But uh, it doesn't, both are okay. Of course, in the book, you will never find this in the proof. Because uh, it's language, okay? It's not logic, it's mathematics. So you use language. You don't use, but here it's, of course, uh, uh, shorter sometimes, okay, to write this. Then. So this mine, I mean, what does it mean? X is in the union, that X is in some of these, no? X is in U. Alpha is not good, no? Alpha, what? Alpha zero. Yes, right. Because alpha is a, here an uh, index, very index. So we have to specify now, OK? X alpha 0 for some, for some, what? Alpha 0 in uh, J, the index set. But this is open, no? This is open. So here's the definition of open. So this means there is bx and so on. So this implies there is now also sometimes, OK? There is, there exists, right? Implies there exists. Sometimes it's shorter, OK? But it's not good style in mathematics, OK? It's just convenient at the blackboard. 
even if you write exercises, it's better to write, okay? You write then, there exists, there is, okay? But of yeah. what, what exists? There exists Bx in B, no? Such that, this double point is okay, such that, with a property that, uh, uh, X is in Bx contained in, what did I write? In U alpha zero, no? And then this, of course, it's sort of stupid to write this, okay? <laughs> so this means we go, this is the first, then we have this, then we have this, then we have this, okay? Sometimes we write this to make it clearer, to emphasize, okay? But it's something that's stupid. And this means that, uh, what, what do we want to prove? That x, of course, is in Bx. And this is contained now also in the union. What is it? U alpha. Alpha, okay? And this means that the union is open. And this is the last step. So I started with this, that means that the union U alpha is open. Absolute units of open sets are open. So this is okay. We didn't use anything, right? It's trivial almost, okay? We didn't even use the first condition. Here we use the first condition now, but here we don't use anything. So where we do use the second condition for, for uh, final intersections, okay? So let me prove this. So that's the third, and I write this finite intersection. That's just the title, okay? That's why I'm putting this way. So it suffices to prove it for intersections of two elements by induction, okay? By induction. suffices to prove it for two elements, for intersections of two elements, okay? It suffices to prove it to prove it for intersections of Two elements. So what? So let given two elements, B1, B2, B and B. Sorry. Uh, what we have to prove is uh, we take two open sets. No? Let U1 and U2 be open. The same. So what we have to prove is uh, that the intersection is open, no? So the intersection, what does it mean? Let x be in the intersection, u1, intersection u2. And to u2. To both, yes, exactly. So this, uh, then, now I write then instead of this, is, but it's the same. Then uh, x is in u1. The best maybe is to write nothing, but and x is in u2, OK? Now u1 and u2 are open, right? u1 and u2 are open. So, therefore, then, there are B1, B2 in B such that 
x is in B1, contained in U1, and x is also in B2, subset in two. By the definition of open. No, this is not the definition. There was a definition, OK? And now x is in So then x, of course, is in B1, intersection B2, contained in U1, intersection U2. This is uh, uh, printed, OK? The elements, so, so these are elements of the topology. The topology is written, but these are printed. Okay, so you ask, what is a written U? Then <laughs> it's not so clear. Yeah. You don't use this, but uh, this is a printed U. Okay, it seems written. I write this way, uh, 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 but we will not see. Okay, because here we have this is a topology. Okay, then X and B one. So what? Uh, uh, this implies that. Then there exists, no, it's, it's not so clear, no, then, 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 that's also not right, no. So, by the third condition, by the second condition, so here we use the second condition. Uh, for a basis, of a ba for a basis, there exists, there is, B3, in the basis such that x is in B3, which is contained in B1, intersection B2, which is contained in yes, U1, intersection U2. And this means, so this was arbitrary. This means this is open. So, so U1 intersection U2 is open. Is in T. Well, of course, I should be coherent in one proof at least, OK? So here's in T, then this is in T. No? Or it's open, then this is open, OK? But I will change every now and then from, from one notation to the other. It means the same. <laughs> so this is very formal, right? It's a topology. It's very formal. So we have a basis, and then we have a topology, OK? That's a, oh, in, in, in other books, you have first a topology, and then you say a basis for a given topology is something, OK? So uh, let, let me discuss this also. So T is called uh, the topology generated by B. No? Maybe I wrote that. So. But uh, that's a, a, a way how to talk. So maybe, so T, did I write it at the beginning? I don't see it. The topology generated, yeah, I wrote anyway. So I will not rewrite, yes. So this is a first a small, easy lemma. So what do you see? This is a very uh, uh, formal. Uh, uh, in, in, in point set topology, in general topology, OK, uh, uh, the proofs are from logic, OK? There are not many computations, OK? It's a language from, OK, to, to uh, logic, OK? That you have to learn. In analysis, you have computations, OK, maybe. Here, you have to do small proofs all the time, OK? Because it's close to logic. General topology. Okay. So the first lemma, small little lemma. So let B be a basis 
for a topology T on X. What does it mean? That means T is the topology generated by B, OK? So T is a topology. That is what this means. It's a topology generated by B, by the basis B. Let B be a basis for the topology, for a topology T on X. OK? Then we can characterize in a different way. We have a definition of the topology, but uh, we write this lemma. Then T is a collection of all unions of elements of B. Then T, the topology, is a collection. The set. T is a set topology. It's a set of all collection of all unions. of elements of B. Maybe this is, uh, uh, these are the words in the book exactly. Of all unions of elements of B. Arbitrary unions. So proof. So since B is contained in T, so this means basis elements are open. Why B is in T? What, what is the definition of T? You know? The definition is something is in T if given the point, there's a basis element which contains the point and is contained. Now we have a basis element. So given the point here, we take B itself. B itself, exactly. Right? Since B in T, so this is true, okay? By definition of the topology T. Since B is in T, Arbitrary unions of elements of B, R, and T, okay? Because union, uh, we know it's a topology, you know? Arbitrary unions of elements of B are in T, are open. So this is it's a collection of all unions. If we take such unions, then we are in T anyway, OK? What we have to prove still that we, we yeah, two directions, uh, that we get all elements in this way, OK? Yeah. If you take arbitrary unions, we have open sets. Now we prove each open set is an arbitrary union, OK? Mm -hmm. Right. So. Since B and T are the use of elements of B. I wrote conversely. Conversely, I don't like so much now. Uh, 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 well, conversely. For the other direction, OK? What is the other direction? It's, it's a, very often, it's a problem of language, OK? How to say in a good word, OK? No computation, but you have to concentrate on the language, OK? How to say it in the best way, OK? Uh, I don't like this too much. Uh, 
Well, it's clear what this means, conversely. Let me write this conversely. Let u be in t. Oh, OK. And we have to prove that u is a union of elements, of basis elements, OK? That's the other. Uh, for each x in u, there is Uh, so what this means open, uh, uh, for each x in u, there's the basis element bx in the basis such that x is in bx. And this is in b. By definition of t, no? That's the definition of t, right? By the definition of t by the definition of the topology T generated by B. That's exactly the definition. And then the union of all things here. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking. Uh, uh, yes, but I'm thinking about uh, what, what uh, I mean, all of this zen, zen, zen is not nice, no? Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, how is our set called? U. U is equal to the U in Bx, x in U. No, let's see. U. So this is all, it looks strange, but it's trivial, no? Uh, one direction is all these BX are, uh, where is it? Uh, I missed something, no? Bx in B, Bx in B. There's Bx in B, such that x is in Bx, in B anyway, contained in, that's the definition, right? Contained in U. So each Bx is in U. So this means one direction is clear, no? Which one? This one? And the other one is equally clear. Why? If we have a point x in u, however, we have bx for each x, OK? So also this direction is clear. And this means that this is a union of elements of b, OK? It's a union of elements of b, of basis elements, OK? Of elements of b. Basis elements. So that's the proof, right? Two parts. First part, arbitrary unions of elements of B are open. Second part, each open set is a union of elements of B. No? So this, this little lemma. So 
So there's a second lemma. And there's a third lemma. They are very similar, the proofs. I will prove the second one, but then maybe not the third one, but because the proofs are very... But if you have to write such a proof, you have to concentrate on, on, on the symbols, on the language now. That's clear. It's not. That's the main point. So there's a second lemma. Lemma. Which is used very often. So it's uh, it's a technical lemma, but uh, it's used to compare topology. So we have two bases. So in general, the topology will be given introduced by a basis, okay? That's why the book, first the basis and the topology, okay? Why? Because in general, it is easy to describe a basis, okay? Open this in R2, this is a standard topology, okay? The basis in general is easy to describe. The topology is, uh, uh, each open set is difficult to describe, indirectly, okay? But not direct description, okay? Open sets in R2 in the analysis are very complicated, no? Extremely complicated. The basis is very simple, okay? So you start with a simple basis and then you have a topology, okay? And you can only define the topology. You cannot describe in general all open sets, okay? It's, there are too many. Okay, that's the reason why the book starts with basis and then topology, because that's an important passage. First, you want something as a basis, and then you have the topology, okay? Not the, first you have the topology, and then you look for a basis, okay? Sometimes also, but in general, it's the other way around. So lemma. So let B be prime. Let B and B prime be basis. So it's E, you know. Let B be prime be basis for topologies T, T prime on X respectively, okay? Which means that B is for T, B generates T, and B prime generates T prime, okay? Then the following are equivalent. Well, I, I use, uh, as it's written in the book, then the following are equivalent. You find everything in the book, of course. And I recommend to read, to take the book, once you have copies, and to, to look at the book, to compare this, OK? Then the following are equivalent. I, one is finer than the other. Let's say T prime is finer than T. T prime is finer than T. I hope you can read everything. It's finer than, if you do, cannot read something, okay, because I'm writing fast and then, so this is an N, not a U, okay? It looks very similar sometimes. It's, sometimes it's not so clear. It's fine. Uh, that's, you should ask if you could, cannot understand some English work, okay? Because it's important that you learn the English also. It's finer than T, and the second one is, uh, for each B and B, And X in B, there is B prime in B prime. such that 
X is in B prime and contained in B. That's a condition. This is a condition which we'll use often to compare two positions. This means T prime is finer than T, okay? For each, so you start with this topology. For each B, for this topology at each point, you have to find something smaller in the, in the other topology, okay? Which contains a point and is contained in this B. That means that this topology is finer, no? It's the wrong, uh, right direction. T prime is finer than T, okay? Anyway, the proof. So we have, again, two directions. So, uh, <coughs> so let me, I, I'm, I'm used to writing this. The first is, so we know what we are proving, okay? 2i implies i. That's this direction. So what i? So we have to prove this t prime is finer than t. That's what we have to prove. So, yeah, that means that any open set here is also here in this topology, okay? So we start with an open set here and prove it's here also, all right? All right? So let u be all in t. So let u, let u be in t. And we have to, what we have to prove? We have to prove that it's in t prime. What does it mean, t prime? So let u in t, uh, uh, we have to prove it's in t prime. What does it mean by the definition of t prime? That for each point, we have to find a B prime yeah, belonging to this. No? Uh, so we take a point, OK? For each, let x and x be in U. OK. What we know, however, so you now see it's clear what, what comes out, more, more or less. But we have to write. Uh, what we know is uh, since uh, uh, u is in t, since b generates t, no? that we know. There is b in b. Sorry? Yes, yes. Since B generates T, there is, by the definition of the topology generated by B, there is B in B such that X is in B contained in, how is this called? U, yes. And now we have this second condition here. Now we have this condition. So we have exactly the same what is written here now. Uh, we have B in B and X in B. There is, so by 2i, there is, there exists, what is it called? B prime in B prime, such that X in B prime in B. X is in B prime contained in B. And of course, B still is contained in U, OK? So I add this, contained in U. So this means then that U is also in T prime, because we found this element here. And this implies that U is also in T prime. And this means that T prime is finer than T. Okay. So this so T prime is finer 
Um, so this is one direction. And now we have to use the other direction, which means I implies 2I. So I write schematically in this way, OK? So what do you have to prove now? I implies 2I. So I, I have to prove 2I, OK? So for each B in B and X in B. So let, without thinking, let B be in B and X in B, OK? Or let B be in B and X in B. <clears throat> Since, yeah, B is contained in T anyway, no? The basis elements are always open. Oh, yeah, this B, this written B. So, the, so, so B, uh, right, this B belongs to T. Okay. What is our hypothesis? T prime is finer than T, means T is contained in T prime. And this is contained in T prime, OK? So B is contained in T prime. By the definition of T prime, no? This is. Of T prime. B prime is no different. T prime is a topology by the definition of the topology uh, T prime generated by B prime, right? By the definition of the topology T prime generated by B prime. No, I have no. Well, I go on here because this is the other direction, right? By the definition, by definition, by the definition, of course, it's a good, it's a better law. By the definition of the topology T prime generated by B prime, but no, well, we have always to look. Well, uh, uh, the, so this is in T prime. This is open in T prime, this. And we have a point here, means we find a basis. Okay? Uh, they, uh, by the division of the there they exist. Remember, I write there is. They exist as the same, no? They exist B prime in B prime such that x is in b prime and contained in b, which was this open set. We call this was an element of t prime. That's what we have. And this is the definition of it. And what? What we have to prove? i implies 2i. Yeah, exactly. What we have to prove, yes. T prime is finer than T. This is, no? That's what it is. And now, this is the end of this proof. There's, well, still one lemma, which I will maybe not prove. Also, the time seems almost finished. So I will write it tomorrow. Of course, we need some examples now, bases now. We will see many examples. It's, uh, the the, the, the uh, idea is that the idea is that a basis is easy to describe. Okay, and so we define topologies by defining a basis. Okay, and then we have a topology. That's the idea. And even a sub-basis we will define tomorrow, okay? So we have topology, basis, and tomorrow we have something still weaker, which is sub-basis.
If it's a topology, it's OK. If it's not a topology, we take it as basis. If it's not a basis, we take it as sub-basis. And sub-basis is almost no condition. So everything is, almost everything is a sub-basis, OK? And this is a way how to generate topologies. And then we need many examples, OK? What I wanted to ask is, uh, so uh, this is very formal, OK? So what you need is a book, OK? You need copies. The first chapter is good to have also a copy, OK? But you need the second, third, and fourth chapter, and then later, chapter 9. And then we may be something from 11, but that's not so clear. So for the moment, what is important, the most important is chapters 2, 3, and 4 of the book. That you need in any case. We will not do anything, everything, OK? It's too long. But we will do the main, some of the main points of these three chapters, 2, 3, and 5. OK? And then later 9, chapter 9. 2, 3, and 4, what was, is this? Well, I cannot. <laughs> you look in the book, what is uh, 2, 3, and 4? The chapters 2, 3, and 4. OK? That we uh, uh, will see uh, where we arrive, OK? Because that depends on you also. Because we may go more or less fast also, right? That depends more on you than on me, OK? If you say something's not clear, it's too fast, and you have to tell me that, OK? It's too fast. For many reasons. Maybe I, the English is not clear. The way uh, uh, the letters is difficult to, to read, OK? Too small in general, not. I don't write very small. So that's, but also that might be a problem, OK? So you cannot read even, no? Then you have to understand the English, and then you have to understand the mathematics. So that we have to see how fast, OK? You can go slower sometimes, or faster. And, and that depends where we will finish, OK? But we will not do all the whole chapters, 2, 3, and 4. But the main points, yes. So have a look at the book. Now, you have to make copies, OK? For the exercises and examples, in any case. You need the book. Chapters 2, 3, and 4 for the moment, OK? Later, chapter 9. If you have, uh, there's somebody around still from, from other years, last year, he will have the copies, OK? They all have the copies. And so it's easier. You don't have to take the book and to make each page, but you have it in one minute, OK? Right? Then that's much easier, of course. But we need it also for the exercises, OK? There are many exercises. And we will use these exercises. And as you know, we, there will be a written final exam, OK? A written final exam, no? And there, the exercises are important, OK? You have to write, OK, exercises to solve. So it's very important exercises. If you understand the exercises, then more or less, then, then, but there are many exercises, so you cannot do anything, uh, everything. There are too many, in some sense. So we will take there's some easy ones, some medium, some difficult. The difficult ones we will not do, but some of the medium difficulty, yes. Who of you has uh, 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 done already a course of some topology? I mean, topology you do in analysis, right? Uh, the reals are two, RL maybe, OK? Real analysis. So you have topology, some topology. You have compact, you have connected. And we will generalize, OK? from a more formal point of view. So uh, who has uh, seen a, a course of general topology? More or less all. <laughs> so that might mean that we may go at a certain point also. It depends on you, OK? So you have to tell me, you know, and then it's too slow, or it's too fast, or we cannot understand the English, we cannot understand the mathematics, we cannot read, okay. 
Okay, so so we see tomorrow at four again. No? We have always Monday and Tuesday. Do we have other? Uh, uh, this is the first course you have now. When, when did it start? Today. So to, uh, uh, today you had real analysis, and then you have uh, complex analysis. No function theory. Wednesday. This week starts. Three courses, all three. And then in October there will be algebra, no? Yeah. Yeah, right. Okay, so we see tomorrow.